So good morning. I want to welcome you to Son of Riches Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Sharon Pizzo. I want to share the word this morning with you, which the Lord named hindsight is 2020. How appropriate. So beloved this morning, what is your new word for the Lord for this new year? Perhaps a new vision or Rima word that has touched your heart from God's spirit filled hand. God has given me a fresh vision for us for this new year pilgrimage as I plan to seek after and invite you all to join me on this new holy quest with a deeper dive. The word for last year was clarity for a 2020 vision. Well, church, God definitely ripped the proverbial bandage from our eyes, our ears, our hearts, and our thoughts to clearly see perhaps the things that were directly in view but we really never had focus upon. I pray that you squared away some of those issues, concerns, circumstances and insights that have blurred the lens of vision, depth of focus, and gained some illumination in the darkness of confusion and quest. My word for this year and for us is renewal. That is my prayer with vision for our congregation as well, that we seek a deeper restoration of our faith because last year we dipped in somewhat blindsided and had to trust our walk of our faith and not our actual sight. Beloved, let me flesh out a question to you. Were you prepared then? Let me ask you another question. Beloved, are you prepared now? When our world as we knew it began to stir, shaken and dissolved? Did you rise up in faith or find yourself at the bottom of a pit of your despair? We need to seek who our ultimate source is and it must be Jesus Christ. Are you still there because only through your faith, your trust and your hope in Christ can bring you a solid foundation of a revived renewal? We just experienced already a turbulent ascent into this new year. Were you buckled in with your belief in God, anchored in hope, focused on God's truth and no one else's and following Christ with your carried cross. We have been afforded, beloved, the extension of a holy invitation to seek deeper, to gain renewal in our strength, witness and courage as we plunge literally into this new year. God provides for those baptized by the Holy Spirit gifts by which to permeate through the hard surfaces and even the deep cracks of this world's demise. As we gaze upon a year gone by, looking back affords us the concept of literally hindsight being 2020. Let us bow our heads for illumination of our, of our word for this morning. Let us pray. Father, give us eyes to see and ears to hear only your soft, small voice that cries mercy, mercy through your spilled blood on Calvary's cross. Father, I pray for transformation and a renewed spirit in each and every one of us, oh God, to go through whatever we're going to go through, Lord. But we know that whatever we go through, you're leading us. Father, you have us hedged in from the back and from the front and on either side. So, Father, as we traverse through these waters, we know, Lord, that you will never flood us over, but give us buoyancy through our word as we trust and seek you, no matter what happens and no matter the waters we face. In Jesus' name, amen. So let me expand a little bit on hindsight being 2020. First off, that statement defined means it's easier to analyze and evaluate situations when, when we're looking back at them in the past than when we're in the present moment. And the word hindsight refers to gazing back, reflecting on things from the past, where we know 2020 refers to perfect vision. Let me liken this to an armchair quarterback on a Monday morning calling all the plays that should have happened on that Sunday game but never did. How often do we call those same bad plays in the dramas of our life? You know, the shoulda, woulda, coulda conversations. So to pin it in, we are a community of Christ, have made it to the finish line, hallelujah, of 2020. Beloved, I want you to ponder these things carefully as I open, give you some open-ended questions for this year, and you may even want to write them down. Beloved, what have you learned or where have you grown and what areas of your personal relationship with Jesus requires a restorative touch to affect renewal in your new year pilgrimage forward? Church, are we still in love? Are we still in awe 
and delight and desire to pursue God each and every day as you once were when you were first saved and born again by the Spirit. We began our new year right off the bat with a Wesleyan covenant re renewal service. Let me ask you, what meaning did those vows unto the Lord unveil to you? And if you did not have a chance to listen to it, it does live on Facebook and YouTube that you can go on. Or if you really want it, I will even email you my manuscript. Do you still recall and remember your baptism? What fervor does that hold for you in your daily walk with the Lord? Have you been baptized by the Spirit and beloved? Do you know? that that even exists because the disciples of John did not. Church, I can only speak for myself, but coming out of a perilous and unprecedented year as we just encountered, how can we not be changed? And we can see it's not over. May we all be changed and transformed into image of what God's initial design was in his original blueprint of our creation. I pray for the transformation from last year's events to bring forth an intimacy with an insatiable desire with regards to our relationships with our family, with our friends, but especially with Messiah. God gave us the gift of intimacy with him. Let us never negate that invitation. And if not, church, my prayer for this year is that we make it top priority to seek after God so you don't miss anything and you are prepared for everything that comes your way, good, bad, or indifferent. That you can stand firm from the darts of the enemy while fully knowing who God has revealed is not part of his design for your plan ahead. If we are filled with the spirit of God, beloved, nothing can shake us apart. You reap what you sow and where you plant yourself is how it will grow. That's what I heard the Spirit say to me this week. I'm going to say it again. You reap what you sow and where you plant yourself is how it will grow. What does the soil of your heart look like these days? And what are you fertilizing it with, beloved, for the harvest to come forth? Choose wisely. Pursue the things of God. Don't look backwards, but go forwards. As we celebrated Epiphany last week, the entrance point of the Magi coming to worship the child king, which completes our Christmas season, now we begin to spin the dial forward to acknowledge the beginning of Jesus's ministry. Perhaps we don't have much, too much intel about Jesus's life up to this point, probably because God's ministerial purpose was a salvation deployment for sending his only begotten son to break through time and space as he entered our world to save us. God's, God's mission is not changed. As the Holy Ghost dwells in us, we are commissioned, beloved, to spread the gospel, evangelize to all we encounter, even if it's by a smile and, a, and, a, and a maybe really wide, happy eyes these days, and invite others by their confession to the Lord into kingdom promises of eternity. You can read the account of John the baptizer preparing the way for Jesus, which is in Mark 1 through 4, 11, and I will just paraphrase some of it. It recounts the baptism of Jesus. John proclaims the need for the baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, which is in chapter four. Now, all of, John, all of the disciples of John were being baptized by him in the River Jordan until Jesus appears. John, feeling completely unworthy to do so, baptizes Jesus as he identifies in that scripture in that moment with the sins of the people, even though he himself being fully man, but fully God had no sin. Then verse 10 says, immediately he saw the heavens being torn open and the spirit descending on him like a dove, which is also symbolic of the Holy Spirit. Here, the spirit of God falls upon Jesus in his baptism. Jesus is thus commissioned for a unique mission as the voice from heaven confirms the eternal love-filled sonship of Jesus the Christ. Verse 11 says, and a voice came down from heaven. You are my beloved son. And with you, I am well pleased. Please note here and notice that in this space of scripture, all three persons of the Godhead are present. The father, the son, and Holy Spirit. This is an affirmation of a holy baptism by a holy hand to a higher level. Amen. Well, at that moment, Jesus was baptized. Significant events took place. Heaven was open. God's spirit descended upon Jesus. God's voice 
was audible. Jesus now has the power in high, on high to equip him for his ministry mission. I preface this to now look at our verse of scripture this morning that I asked you to turn to Acts this morning. We are now at Ephesus, where the Apostle Paul led some of the disciples of John the Baptist um, to Christ. His Ephesian ministry then extended throughout the entire Asian providence. In Acts chapter 8, 25 through 20, uh, 24 through 25, which came before our scripture verse today, just a point of reference, when you read a scripture verse or something that, that someone tells you to read or something that's on your heart, make sure you read what comes before and what comes after so you understand the full spectrum and context of what the scripture is actually telling you. We don't want to do bumper sticker church, right? We want to understand fully the text and the context of Jesus Christ's words. So going back in, after, in Acts chapter 18 through 24, we hear of Apollos, who was now a Jew and a native of Alexandria that came to Ephesus. He was an eloquent man and competent in the scriptures. And in this piece of verse, we also are told that he had been instructed in the way of the Lord and being fervent in spirit, he spoke and taught accurately the things concerning Jesus. To be fervent in spirit means to be on fire for God, a burning zeal to do the will of God for God. That is the spiritual benchmark. I pray the church desires and pursues in this hour more than anything else. Lord, church, we need to be alert for the worldly distractions pulling you away from the things of God, including church. In chapter 19, verse 1, tells us that Paul and Apollos crossed paths while at Corinth. I like to imagine this to be a divine point of sorts through the inland. The inland country refers to the main highway that went westward through the mountainous region from Phygia into Asia and onto the um, Ephesus coastline. There Paul found some of John the baptizer's disciples and he asked them some interesting questions. Um, he asked if they received the Holy Spirit when they believed. And in verse two, they replied, no, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then Paul asked a very powerful and profound question to them in verse three, into what then were you baptized? And they replied into John's baptism. So let's breathe there for a moment. What a telling question and a more um, telling answer. See, they were baptized, but they missed the gift, not of forgiveness of sins, but of baptismal in the Holy Spirit. See, they understood they were baptized by John with the baptism of a repentance by a human hand, but they were missing a piece here. Gazing back in a hindsight vision, as Paul could explain to them here about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, they missed the boat of the teaching, the history, the miracles, the signs and the wonders of Jesus's life and ministry. Certainly, they weren't schooled on the mystery and the wonder of his death and resurrection. This is why it is vital and important that we understand the whole story of Jesus's birth, life, death and resurrection, because that is the crux of our faith and the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And if you don't understand it as a whole, then you miss possibly the authority and the victory and the power of the cross that washed us clean and the power and the victory and authority that lives in you, believer. Church, we may always, we, uh, we may always seek a personal relationship with God, but not an acquaintance intermingling grounded in a hindsight expression. So you can't have a whole solid foundation in God if you only have pieces and parts. We need to seek after the cornerstone, come on, of an abundant knowledge of God so we understand his desires and will for our lives and Holy Ghost power that we have through God. Otherwise, your faith walk is as solid as a slice of Swiss cheese. Yes, pastor said Swiss cheese full of holes, of misunderstandings, misrepresenting and misnomers of who Jesus Christ is. Proverbs 1, 7 tells us, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Verse five reveals that Paul taught them. He taught them now how Jesus fulfilled the message of John the Baptist as the forerunner for Christ, making the way for the way maker for humanity. These disciples of John submitted to baptism in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Their baptism was no longer steeped in a hindsight glimpse 
only of the forgiveness of sins, but the uh, renewal encounter of the Holy Spirit fire that came upon them to restore them, that they with reciprocity fully received the gifts of the Spirit that came upon them. Beloved, if your baptism is only tied to something that you can't remember or recall, or a yellowed envelope with, envelope with an old certificate in it, let this be the time now to reignite that flame of baptism because it's so much more than that. Seek after it with a burning desire and do not relent. Hallelujah. One crucial aspect of baptism is not what happens when we're, bapti when we're baptized, but what happens after the fact. Not only to focus on Christ as someone who did something for us back then, but to gaze with our focus on Christ as someone who through the power of the spirit lives in us and moves us forward now, today, and evermore. This is the word what the Lord gave me this morning, actually. Transformation is a forward seeking action is found by us through his spirit. Hindsight is a complacent reaction of an opportunity lost. Take a moment. This is the difference between religion and relationship. Something we did, something we are, something we know about God, something that God who knows us does within us. Beloved, I invite you this year to make it personal. Amen. My prayer this summer, because we were not able to do it last year, is to be able to do adult baptisms again. So for anybody that heart is burning right now, and it's not Ajita, uh, I believe it's the spirit moving. We will talk about it and plan, I pray, to have some baptisms this summer. Amen. Make this year a renewal faith, committed to seek after newly restored faith, fueled by a Holy Ghost fire. This is a wonderful quote from St. Augustine. To fall in love with God is the greatest romance. To seek him is the greatest adventure but to find him the greatest human achievement. Verse six, and when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them and they began speaking in tongues and prophesying. This was an immediate response that illuminated an outward demonstration and verification of their receiving of the Holy Spirit. Beloved of God, speaking in tongues is, not, is biblical. It is a biblical practice. It is not fictional. The key is that once Paul shared the gospel and shared Christ, they now believed. They weren't aware of Jesus and his saving work before. They knew nothing of the spirit of the conversion. They had now taken the first step of repentance of sins, but now they had to take the corresponding step, which is faith in Christ. Once these 12 dozen Men of Ephesus received Christ by faith, the Holy Spirit, as true to form as the Spirit will do. Fill them, come on somebody with his presence, and they became new creations in Christ. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. Do you see the difference of a renewal understanding of what Jesus can do in your spirit life? I pray that you can this morning. And I pray with that knowledge that you can find encouragement into a deeper well of faith and relationship with your, with your father in heaven. Our relationship with our heavenly father is one of cooperation on our part. Nurture and surrender. Surrender. Say that word where you are. It's a tough word in the culture we live in today. The more we seek after the tenets of our faith with an intensity of Pentecost, the more we will grow stronger in our ability to stand firm when the darts of the evil one enters our homes, careers, bank accounts, habits, health reports, and even our thoughts. And to understand the gifts of the spirit and to know how to use them to the glory of God. And also to welcome the spirit to fall afresh on us, especially in this season. Amen. I want to read to you Paul's account as he taught the church in Corinth about these gifts. If you have never heard this before, I know I've preached this before, but sometimes we have to hear things a couple of times before they resonate within us. Um, you can find this piece of scripture in 1 Corinthians. It's chapter 12, verses 4 through 11. And I want to lift this up today because it's important as we are hearers of the word. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit distributes them. 
They are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given through the spirit, a message of wisdom. To another, a message of acknowledgement by means of the same spirit. To another, faith by the same spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between spirits. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. And to still another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same spirit. He distributes them to each one just as he determines. See, these gifts are unique to each believer as the spirit is the administrator of all of these gifts. Psalm 29 that was read this morning is a strong hymn of praise unto the Lord for his awesome power. Verse 10 and 11 reminds us that the Lord sits enthroned over the floods, that God sits as a king forever enthroned, that even in the storms of life, come on, someone needs to hear this this morning. God makes the distinction clear as bright as the sunny day between the faithful and the unfaithful. Hence the prayer that God will give strength to his people and bless his people with peace, which requires on our part to be true to him always. See, God desires his faithful people to be well equipped and covered in peace with his hand in all circumstances as he gives us strength. Beloved, we can't do any of what we're doing today by ourselves. Please know that you have to invite the spirit of God to work in all areas of your life. This, this new year, child of God, seek deeper with an unrelenting passion for more of God in your life. That is the priority. That is the priority. I'm going to say it again in case you didn't hear that. That is the priority above any other. This year, I pray we receive greater revelation for a clarity of what we learned from last year. Lord, I pray that you help our hindsighted vision, vision catapult us into a renewed love relationship. Amen. With the Lord like never before. I don't want the anointing and I don't want the providence of last year. I want to seek something of God new and afresh and restored for this year by the authority of a bloodstained adoption as we are as to the throne of a heavenly kingdom. Our father helps us to face the overwhelming mountains that stand in the way of our sight. The undesired valley seasons that we have traversed in and may still be in and the unseen floods that might try to drown us. I want to follow God, not invite him to follow me. We serve the almighty God of the providence, promises, and provision. Beloved, be encouraged this morning. We serve the God of the parted seas and a rainbowed sky. Amen. So in closing, Beloved, let me spur you on this morning. I challenge you this week to begin a new regiment of renewal and restrengthening with the Lord if you have not done so already. Perhaps fasting with prayer, a new schedule of reading the Bible from Gen Genesis to Revelation. Purchase a new devotional to start your day or end it with um, as God should be the bookends to your heart, mind, and soul. Truth be told, you've heard this before, if nothing changes, Nothing changes, including your relationship with the Lord. See, I don't want stale bread from last year. I want fresh manna from heaven this year. Come on, somebody. This time is now. The waiting is over to get right with Jesus. It's a sound sifting down an hourglass as the bridegroom is almost at the door. May this be the year of intentional pilgrimage with Jesus to renew what still requires a restorative touch within you. So you can share the gospel vision while avoiding only a high side view. Beloved, for the benediction, bow your heads. Go now and live in the spirit of your baptism. Even when you are led into wild and hard places, with repentance and trust, give yourselves to God. With fasting and prayer, strengthen yourselves against the ways of the tempter. And may God enfold you in tender and lasting love. May Christ be beside you in times of struggle. And may the spirit guide you back to the path where, whenever you stray and that you may keep the covenant 
Beloved, go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ. And the church said, amen. Thank you. God bless you. It's so good to see you. I'm just going to stop recording. So 